All right, let's do this. We only have a couple more days left of reading, right? And I'm, I'm kind of happy about that because today's reading is there's a lot of cringe. Uh, some of the things in some of the classes we were talking about a couple days ago, it's like getting worse. The jokes are getting worse. I don't know if like Lisa McMahon herself is just, eh, I don't really want to continue writing this because I don't really want to continue reading this. I don't know. It's just getting bad. The jokes, there's going to be some cringe going on here today. It's like, what happened? I don't know. I really enjoyed the first two books. This one's just, I don't know, off the rails. Maybe Lisa McMahon was like, thinking I should have made this just two books instead of three trilogies too much. And then they're going to do something that just doesn't make sense within the same scene. But let's get to it. Let's get to it. All right. Maybe this is the last day we read. I don't know, but let the cringiness ensue. I mean, not all of it's cringy, but some of it is. All right. So if you remember um, they or Jewel sent Tori, a bunch of questions. Her mom said like she's sleeping. So they're kind of just waiting for her to respond. It may not happen uh, today, but they're outside of their new house. Ben's on speakerphone, if you remember. So three siblings and Sawyer, Ben's on speakerphone. We head back home and stand in the driveway. I make everyone gather around and I say, I wish we didn't have to do this, guys. It was so nice there for a couple of days, thinking it was all over and we could go on with our lives. I watch Sawyer's face as he stares at the ground. You can all walk away, you know. Like, remember this line here. It might be kind of important for shh, right there. This line right here. It may be important in a minute. This is my deal. I don't want anybody here who doesn't want to be here. I can't handle that hanging over my head. I look at them. Think about it. Let me know. I don't need to think about it, Trey says. Me neither, Rowan adds. I'm in. I'll go where Trey goes, Ben says. I forgot he was still on the phone with us. Sorry, he looks up. Okay, this is this is this is uh, where the cringe begins. I think we're all in, baby. He says, "Sink or swim." He chuckles uneasily. Mm, not funny, but Trey groans and pats Sawyer on the back. We say goodbye to Ben and hang up and make our way to the house. Rowan and I walk together while Trey and Sawyer fall behind and linger by Sawyer's car. And I hear Trey say, it'll be okay, bro. We'll get through it together. I glance at them, puzzled. And I realize Sawyer is not following us to come inside. Later, guys, he says. Night, Jules. He gets into his car, starts it, and pulls out of the driveway. I knit my brows, then lift my head to wave and watch him go. Right, so there might be the first hint that things are not exactly going well between the couple. And Sawyer has seemed kind of selfish. I'll admit, you know, if I was in high school, it's not like he's married to her. There are a lot of other girls he could date. Maybe some without visions. I was like, um, this is just too much of a hassle. I don't know. Maybe that's what he's thinking. Just keep an eye on that. And all right. And some other things happen. All right. We'll get to it. I think we'll get to it today. 23. In the morning, after the, the traditional jockeying for the bathroom at 6 a.m., I lose to phone checking distraction. I'm relieved to find a lengthy message from Tori. One, rocks are in the distant, distant along, I think, the shore. Okay. So that's probably not good. Two, can't really see much land per se, though because of weird angle, spray, and chaos, but I think it's there. So at least they can see it, but it's like in the in the distance. Ship is mostly white, but blue on the bottom. Didn't catch any markings. Everything goes so fast. Four, weather is stormy. I think it's raining, but could be spray. Five, some low light in the sky, like early mid-morning, Maybe a glimpse of a far off building could be a weird shadow. It's just a flicker. Is there a way to stop this crazy thing so I can actually look at it? I reply, great stuff here. We'll check in with you soon. We'll teach you how to pause it. Let me know if anything shows up. It usually does. She probably, as she probably already knows. 
There's another text message from Sawyer this time. Sorry, I left all weird. Wasn't feeling well. Better today. Ready to tackle Tori's vision. See you at school in late. Uh, I don't know what that is. Maybe somebody can uh, help. There's the old ampersand there, but it could be and it semicolon three. Hmm. Not sure what that is. Somebody, please help. I guess we could look it up, but I, that would be too easy. Hopefully somebody knows. Don't look it up. I mean, I can look it up. I'm just doing a quick copy and paste here. Like, don't look it up. Does anybody know what that means? Hmm. All right. I found it. I had no idea that. Maybe that's a 2010 thing. Maybe you can tell me. I don't know. I smile. Maybe that's all it was. Of course it's not going to be, right? We've seen enough movies. We've read enough books. There's something there. At school, Sawyer acts completely normal. And I think I must have seen something that wasn't really there regarding his weirdness yesterday. No, he just told you he felt weird. No, there was something. Look, at it's just right up here. Sorry, I left all weird. I think I must have seen something that really wasn't there regarding his weirdness yet. No, no. He said it right there. Right there. All right, that's just the first of things that bother me. Trey Sawyer and I meet up for lunch as usual. And for the first time since the fire, Roxy and BFF, Sarah, give me a long stare as they walk by our table. And Roxy says something immature about my ugly hand-me-down fire clothes. Ugh, I call after her. An insult? Finally. Now things are really starting to feel like they're back to normal. I knew I was missing something in my life. You're welcome, Roxy says. I... I Trey and I look at each other. She was actually funny, he says. I'm just going to leave it at that. It's just, I'm, I was just going to say that, I say. Jules is impressed. Okay, this is the second time that she has referred to herself in the third person, which I do not like. I don't like it. I don't know if you've ever had elementary school teachers that do that. Oh, Mr. Watson likes your project. Like, mm, no, I would never do that. Hopefully, Jules will stop. But that's a second. It's a little pet peeve of mine. I don't know. I think we all have it, right? Nobody likes to hear that stuff. All right. So um, I'm just very disgruntled today, I guess. I'm just I'm, I'm, I'm in a good mood. I mean, it's raining out. I'm not. I'm just this book is putting me in a bad mood right here. All right. The next one. So is Trey. Trey says. So he refers to himself in the third person now. Okay. This. I'm not even going to read this because this is just absolutely cringe. It goes on past this ad here. But so is Trey. Sawyer looks at us. Is this the latest DeMarco thing to do? I'm just trying to keep up here. I thought we were still doing dot-com jokes. Okay, remember? Okay, this is actually kind of funny right here, I guess. Like kind of breaking the fourth wall. Dot-com jokes were so two visions ago. Yeah, that was from the first book. Okay, and then Trey and Sawyer go back and forth about like playing, like kissing on, e kissing each other, and cheating with each other. Uh, uh, you got your sisters at the table. That's just not, just not cool. All right, but I mean, feel free to read or whatever. It's just, oh, that's awful. All right, I change the subject. Okay, thank you. Yeah, this is this is going from bad to worse. So you have. You have that joke going on. And then the next thing is like another one of those, like, oh, I thought something was weird with Sawyer. And he just told you it's weird. This is worse right here coming up. This is worse. I change the subject. So what are we going to do about Tori? Should we head over there after school or what? I'm personally getting really sick of the drive to UC. Traffic makes me crazy. Trey and Sawyer sober up and we toss around options. There's not a huge hurry, is there? All the visions have had time frames of at least a few weeks, right? Sawyer asks. Yeah, mine was more like six or seven weeks, longer than yours, I say. And mine was longer than Tori's first one, Sawyer says. Trey knits his brows. I think that's the second time she's used that, right? Knitting brows. Um, I mean, it's not a bad, like authors use it all the time, but it's like when your eyebrows kind of go close together. When you're thinking, but she's used it twice in like a page, maybe a little bit of lazy writing there. All right, let me get uh, get this back here. 
So it appears that the time from first vision to the day of the tragedy is growing progressively shorter. I wonder if that's something to note or just a coincidence. Good question, I say. I consider it for a moment. But in all instances, or at least in Sawyer's and mine, the vision gave us more information as time progressed. A hidden frame exposed here, an extra scene there, I say, remembering the moment I discovered Sawyer's face in the body bag. And in all cases, the visions appeared more frequently as the event became imminent, Sawyer says. He taps his chin. I can't believe I'm saying this, but the way it works, it really seems like the vision gods want you to succeed. I give a sarcastic laugh. <laughs> They're on our side, all right. You know what I mean. I nod. Yeah, I do. The vision really does give you the clues you need and the urgency to find all the answers. You just have to work at it to see them all. As the bell rings, Trey concludes, so maybe we should wait a few days to visit Tori in hopes that she gets more information or some new scenes in the vision. Sawyer and I look at each other and nod. Let's shoot for this weekend then, I say. I'll let everybody know if anything changes, but I'm sure we're safe to wait until then. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, probably not. I mean, just the way this thing is going. But didn't they just say in the same breath, they said that the vision to the actual event, like the first time you see the vision to the actual event is growing shorter. So their option is, uh, let's wait. Should be the opposite. I know they're waiting for Tori to get more things, more visions, more information. But I don't know if that's wise. Oh, okay, let's just wait. It's almost like they're so, it's just too easy. It's just too easy. All right, 27. Maybe that's a good place for us to stop. We got uh, Tori getting discharged from the hospital. Probably uh, so gruesome, she says. Uh, yeah, probably a good place to stop. I don't know. Maybe we should read something else uh, for the next. What, we got two days left, Thursday and Friday. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, I'm just kind of hoping that boat sinks, right? Just let's get it over with. Just kidding. I don't want anybody to die, even though it's a fiction. But if it goes down, like, I don't want to say, I don't want to say any names. Some people are speculating. In this book, maybe Trey, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Trey dies. Maybe we need that. Just, just off Trey. Like you need, like with the Avengers, I'll go back to Marvel. You need like something big to happen. Killing off Iron Man. Like, whoa, this world is real. Things can happen. Just like in the real world. Captain America's no more. A lot of spoilers. Black Widow's no more, right? And also I think... They feel like the actors are kind of aging, so they need younger ones. Look at Tom Holland. He's like, what, 14? Something like that. So they need younger and younger actors. Yeah. And then Hawkeye, the new kind of Hawkeye. She's really young. All right. Enough rant.